Yep. Hello guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Dino and I'm a teacher at Rendercraft Academy. The summer just started, so let's use our free time to get some proper Blender knowledge. In this tutorial I will show you the basics of rigid body simulation in Blender. By the end of the video I will show you simple but yet amazing animation that you can post on your social media or you can include it in your portfolio. You will also get a good foundation to continue expressing your ideas by the methods that I'm going to use in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we have our default screen and here in this left corner you will be able to see all the shortcuts that we are going to use. So the way we are adding physics to Blender is by going here under physics properties and here you can see different physics that you can apply on your objects. So we want to apply rigid body so we can just press left click here and we already applied. So as you can see nothing is changed but if you play your animation you can see that our cube is falling down and the reason for that is because if you go under scene properties you can see the gravity is turned on and it's turned on on the z axis which we want actually. You can always change this if you need but I'm going to keep everything as it is. So now we can go and return on our first frame here. And let's go and move our cube up by pressing G and Z and let's add plane, scale it up and let's play our animation. So you can see that our cube is falling through the plane so we will need to apply another rigid body and that one will be rigid body on the plane so we can go under physics properties here, add rigid body and let's play our animation. So right now they are both falling down and the reason for that is because our rigid body type for the plane is set to be active. So we want to switch this to be passive and right now our cube will finally hit the plane as we need. I'm going to go in edit mode by pressing tab and by pressing ctrl and b I'm going to bevel those edges. Let's go and return in object mode and change shading from flat to smooth by pressing right click. And now we have these smooth edges on our cube. So now we can go and add a little bit rotation on our cube and we can do it by duplicating this first frame by pressing shift and D and move it up. Let's go and scale it down. I'm going to move in right orthography view, rotate it a little bit on the side and place it here. So now if you play this animation you can see that our cube will hit this first frame and after that it will land on the second one. So now we can go and create backdrop for our scene and we can create it from this plane here. So we can go in edit mode, select those two back vertices and by pressing E and Z we can go and extrude it up this new face. And now we can go and just select those two vertices and by pressing Ctrl and B we will be able to bevel it out. And now we can go and scroll once to add a little bit more geometry to it. And now we can go in object mode by pressing tab and change shading from flat to smooth. So now we can go and play our animation. So you can see that our cube is not falling on this first plane as it should be and the reason for that is because this collision on our rigid body on our plane is set to convex hull which means Blender is trying to fill the gap here with, and is trying to connect those two edges and it's creating phase there and on that phase our cube will hit so it means that we will need to change the collision shape here on our plane from convex hull to mesh and let's play our animation one more time so you can see that now everything is just fine. So now I'm going to go and switch to rendered view and here I'm going to remove our default light. Next we can go and switch also our render engine from being EV to cycle and currently we don't have any lights to the scene so let's go and create simple plane to the scene with the shift and A. I'm going to create simple plane. Let's move it up here and on this plane we can go and add emission shader which will help us to get some smooth lighting to the scene. So I'm going to go here under shading create a new material for our plane and I'm going to delete this principle BSDF by pressing X here and with the shift and A I'm going to search for emission node. Now I'm going to connect emission node to material output and let's switch to rendered view. So now we can go and increase strength here and also we can scale this plane by pressing S. Now we can return here in layout mode and I'm going to select my camera. So now I will press N to open the M panel for this camera and here I want to return this to be zero location and also rotation as well. And now our camera is looking down so we will need to rotate it for 90 degrees on the X axis. Now I'm going to go and move in right orthography view and move our camera a little bit here on the back and let's press zero to enter in camera mode. So now I'm going to go and move our camera a little bit more on the Y axis. And also now I want to select my camera and here I will increase the focal length of my camera by going here under camera properties 
and replacing our focal length from 50mm to 35mm like so and let's go and return our camera a little bit closer to the scene and by pressing S and X I'm going to scale our backdrop like so and now we are having the issue with this ugly shade that is getting from this plane here so I'm going to disable this plane from being rendered so I can just press here and if you cannot see this icon here the reason for that is because the filter for rendering is turned off so you can navigate here and enable it just like so and now you can just select here and you can disable this plane from being rendered so now let's go and return in our camera view and let's play our animation so you can see our cube is a little bit too big and it's a little bit floating above this plane and the reason for that is because the sensitivity on this plane is set to be higher than it needs so I can go and select my plane here and here you can see the sensitivity is set to be 0.04 so now if you press 3 you can see and zoom in you can see that our cube is actually a little bit floating above on from our plane so I'm going to return on our first frame and let's replace this margin point to be 0.01 let's say and I'm going to play it one more time so now you can see that it's on the ground as it should be so now our cube is a little bit too big so I'm going to return on our first frame and I will press S to scale it down so now let's play this animation and you can see that our cube is actually a little bit lighter than before also I'm going to go and select those two vertices and by pressing G and Y I'm going to move it back further from the scene so now you can see that if you press 0 you can see that our camera is looking in front of this cube so let's go and add color to our cube I'm going to use simple material for the base color I will use this yellow color like so and also for this backdrop we can use this bluish color to about here is going to be just fine and also I'm going to go and move our plane here and scale it up a little bit like so and now let's go and also duplicate this cube one more time so here with the shift and D I'm going to duplicate this cube and move it a little bit on the side let's press, press R to rotate it a little bit on the side to get a little bit different results when it's hitting the ground let's move this cube here and this one here and now let's play our animation so you can see they are both falling down and they are staying there there is also one more thing that I want to mention about rigid body and that is you can also control the surface response. If you select this plane and go here on the surface response you can see that we have friction and bounciness. So for example if you go and increase bounciness to 1 and also increase bounciness on our cubes to 1 like so and play your animation you can see that actually both of our cube will bounce when they hit the ground a little bit more you can see the jumping up. If you want you can experiment with this and here you can increase this number way more so you can go and for example increase it to 10 let's play our animation to see how it's going to react when it's 10 you can see that the bounciness is way too strong so i'm going to turn it off on all our objects so i want to lower down this friction which means resistance of the object movement so by default is 0.5 and I want to lower it down to 0.1 and now you can see that if you play this animation one more time you can see that now both of our cubes are moving further from the starting point and the reason for that is the friction is set like so. I'm going to go and select my cubes here and let's move them closer to each other like so and I want this cube to hit our camera and when it hits camera I want also it to rotate it as well so we can do it by creating another cube to the scene with the shift and a cube and here i'm going to move our cube on top of the grid scale it down a little bit and move it where our camera is like so and on this cube we can go and add simple rigid body scale it on the x-axis so let's play our animation so now you will be able to see that once this camera reached to this cube it will also hit it and also rotate it on the side but it will rotate it away to more so I'm going to go and increase mass here by default it's set to be 1 kilogram so here we can go and increase it to 10 kilos and let's see what's going to happen now and now we will need to parent our camera to this object as well so here I can select camera and after that I can select this cube and by pressing ctrl and p we can go and set parent object and keep transform so now let's play our animation and now you will be able to see that also our camera is going to rotate on the side 
So now if you press 0 you will not be able to see anything and the reason for that is because our camera is inside of this cube. So we can go and disable this cube from being seen in the scene by going here under object properties and under visibility you will be able to go and disable this from being seen in renders and also in the viewports as well. So let's play our animation and see if everything is fine. So this cube will hit us and also will rotate us a little bit on the side as well. So that's the effect that we want from this animation. So here you can see that with a few clicks you can get great results as well. So I also want to mention one more thing and that one if you go here under scene property. Here you can see that rigid body walk is set to be active and also we have speed parameter. So here you will be able to play with the speed of your simulation. And also if you go under cache. Here you can see that the simulation starts from the first frame and also it ends on 250th frame. So if you happen to have your animation to be longer than 250 frame, here you will be able to also replace it as well to increase or decrease your simulation. And also here now you will be able to bake your animation and it's going to be much faster when you try to render it out and when you play it in your scene. But be careful with baking because once you bake your animation you will no longer be able to change your simulation unless you delete all bakes and after that you replace with another baking. Once you want to render it out and everything is ready you can just press render, render animation and your rendering is going to begin. The point of this tutorial is to show you how easily with a few clicks you can get amazing results. By the end of the day, remember, you are the artist. You will get hired for doing and creating art first and after that for your technical knowledge. So try exercising your art skill first and after that your technical knowledge will land perfectly. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn Blender, check out our online academy, rendercraft.com with over 80 courses inside about Blender. The link will be down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!